Hey there and welcome to Morning Manna. If you're just joining us, I'm Anna Wiggins and all week long we've been talking about the ways God calls his people to stand against the enemy, the ways he calls us to battle. And we've looked at it through the characters found in Judges chapter four. As a review, verses six through nine outline our story. She, Deborah the judge, sent and summoned Barak and said to him, Has not the Lord, the God of Israel, commanded you? Go gather your men at Mount Tabor. Take 10,000 from the people of Naphtali and the people of Zebulun. And I will draw out Sisera, the general of Jabin's army. That's the king of the Canaanites. So this is the enemy of God's people. I'll draw him out to meet you by the river Kishon with his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. From the very beginning of the story, the Lord said that he would draw the enemy out and that he would bring the Israelites victory. That's exactly what God did. God specifically said that the battle would take place at the river Kishon. This wasn't a large river. It was basically a stream of water in the desert. Nothing of consequence. The Canaanite army vastly outmatched the Israelites in number and weaponry. They had 10 times the number of soldiers and were equipped with 900 chariots made of iron against 10,000 ill-equipped men from Israel. But the Lord had promised to deliver a decisive victory to his people. If you read Judges chapter five, you, you read a poem from Deborah. And verses 20 and 21 tell us that as the battle began, God opened up the heavens and a rainstorm caused a flash flood that disabled the heavy iron chariots in the mud and water. A torrential downpour in the middle of the dry season rendered Sisera's army defenseless at the hands of the Israelites. Who but God could have commanded the weather? God called his people to battle, but the battle always belonged to the Lord. Every one of us is called to battle. It's not something unique. It's something innate placed in us by God. He placed within us the heart of a warrior because he's the ultimate victor and we're created in his image to reflect his heart. And he's given us his authority to accomplish his purposes. And he calls us to battle. But the battle has always and will always belong to the Lord. Whether you're in the place in your life right now where you sit as a person of wisdom among people who are foolish or whether you're a warrior who feels defeated or maybe you feel like you're just simply a housewife, remember, God didn't save you and call you to sit on the sidelines in the nation, in the workplace, or in your home. He's called you to stand. Though you may not feel like the obvious choice, though at times you may feel defeated, right where you are, the Lord calls you to battle and the battle belongs to him. He's already victorious over every enemy we face. We don't have time to dig into it today, but our team has included a link to our Advancing the Kingdom prayer guide It's a reference tool that I go over all the time. In fact, I keep it on my phone so that I can quickly go back and read the scriptures that outline the principles of spiritual warfare. That's the key because remember Ephesians 6, we talked about the armor of God. Verse 12 tells us that no matter what it looks like to us, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. We stand in the battle by standing on the truth of the Word of God. Like I said, I keep that guide on my phone, not only so that I can use it, but also so when people call me, I can quickly share it with them so they can read the scripture for themselves and stand on His Word. Well, it's been a privilege to spend this time with you throughout the week. God bless you.